Hey, today all day, we've got a great show for you on this Tuesday morning. Dylan Dreyer joins us to talk Rusty the Baby and her new children's book, Misty the Cloud. But let's kick it off with Popstar. We have an exclusive first look at J.K. Rowling's new book, The Christmas Pig. Best time of the day! <laughs> Pop star, uh, baby! Well, we want to say good morning to Chanel. Good and morning, also, we're going to talk to, I mean, Dylan Dreyer. He's got yeah. a new book, yep. Baby yeah. Rusty. Mm-hmm. There's Dilly. We're going to talk to them in a minute. Oh, she looks so good. There's, I know. That's the okay. tease. Uh, first up, though, on Pop Star, Timothy Chalamet, the actor known for starring in films like Little Woman and Lady Bird, sharing a first look at his next role as Willy Wonka. Chalamet giving fans a peek at his look from the upcoming movie musical titled Wonka. The film is a prequel. Oh, wow. Focusing on a young Willy Wonka and his adventures that leads up to opening the chocolate factory. Oh. Chalamet writing, the suspense is terrible. I hope it will last. <laughs> he, of course, takes on the role made famous by former Willy Wonka's Gene Wilder, the best. That debuted in 1971. Mm-hmm. Yes. Still one of the best movies of all time. Donnie Depp remade it in 2005. And in keeping with the tradition set by previous films, Wonka will feature original new music. In a recent interview with Time magazine, Chalamet revealing that he spent a weekend at London's Abbey Road recording studio working on the soundtrack. Wonka set to in 2023. Great casting on that. Next up, J.K. Rowling, the Harry Potter author, is celebrating Christmas early this year. Rowling out with a new book today titled The Christmas Pig. It's the story of a boy who loses his beloved toy pig on Christmas Eve. And with the help of his replacement toy, goes on an adventure to find it. Rowling sharing how her own son experience inspired the story. He had this grubby little pink pig, which he still has, out, but which was always getting lost, just like Jack in the story. He was constantly hiding this pig. And I became panicky that one day he was going to lose this pig for good. So I bought a replacement and I hid it in a cupboard. I kept thinking about what it would be like to be the replacement toy, this second pig. And out of that grew the story of the Christmas pig. Wow. Mm-hmm. To hear more of J.K. Rowling on the new book, The Christmas Pig, you can head over today to today.com. And finally, today also marks the release of our very own Dylan Dryer's yeah. first children's book, yes. Missy the Cloud, a very stormy day. And in honor of the big occasion, we've got the author on the line. <laughs> Dilly Dilly, you're Dilly. a tough looking boy. Dilly. 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 Thanks, guys. We'll start plugging your book in a second. Let's get to the good stuff. How is baby Rusty? <laughs> Baby Rusty is, I mean, he's a, a dream. It makes Ollie look so difficult because this baby literally just sleeps and eats all day long. Mm. And it's no problem. I'll, I mean, Oliver's Aww. the one I've been <laughs> struggling with at this point. But, um, I mean, bringing him home to the boys, that Calvin is absolutely obsessed. Like, it's hard to find a picture where Calvin isn't hugging him or kissing mm. him or laying on top of him. So um, it's it's just been a really, really special time. I that, love that. That raises the question how Ollie feels. <laughs> <laughs> Ollie was the, the yeah. baby of the castle. Now he's the middle guy. Yeah. <laughs> he was. Ollie, I mean, Ollie wasn't a baby for that long before we just bring home another baby. Mm. So he's, he's adjusting. Um, he doesn't really understand the word gentle. <laughs> so um, we're, we're trying to teach him that word. Um, there's a lot of jumping on the couch, so we have to we have to keep the baby away from the couch or else he's just going to get stepped on at this point. <laughs> and really quickly, Dylan, how are you? I mean, we haven't lost sight of the fact that you had this little guy almost two yeah. months early, yeah. And, yeah. and now he's home. You've got a party of six if you include Bosco. If you include Bosco, yeah. You know, the, the running joke was I didn't think I was going to last till my due date because I, I felt huge this time around, although I didn't really think he'd come six weeks early. But I have to say... Um, I was at New York Presbyterian of Lower Manhattan, mm-hmm. and the the NICU team. Mm-hmm. I mean, it it actually made everything so much easier because they put the baby on the schedule. They, you know, had the baby the first few nights, so I got to sleep. He stayed there for a week, so I got to sleep. Mm-hmm. So in a weird way, it was almost like he was taken care of, and I didn't Aww. have to do all the work the first, you know, those first two weeks that are the hardest. So, um, I mean, and and now he's thriving. I feel great. I mean. I mean, and right you didn't now. have to be pregnant for six more weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Every woman yeah. knows that's pretty good. Hey, yeah. Dylan, congratulations on a lot of things. By the way, Haley's having withdrawal from not seeing Calvin and not seeing you, but <laughs> we do have your book. Mm-hmm. Misty the Cloud. It is already a favorite in our house. You have been waiting Aww. to give birth to this book for a long time. <laughs> the, uh, the moment oh, is yeah. here. I know they're crazy about it. But tell us what it feels like to finally have this book out in the universe. Well, I, I honestly didn't think I, I would be home promoting this book because, I mean, this book was supposed to come out in September. So everything just kind of mm-hmm. changed. Um but, I mean, this is literally something my husband Brian and I worked on for 10 years. It was just this little idea. You know, you look up at the sky and you, 
and at least me, maybe because I'm a meteorologist, I don't know. But I look up at the sky and I imagine, what if there's a world up there? What mm. if these clouds are doing things? You know, when you used to be scared of thunder, your parents always told you it was the angels bowling or something, you know. But what if there was this world up there? And then it just kind of, it, it, our imagination just ran wild because I realized how many emotions are tied to the weather. You know, mm-hmm. you wake up, it's cloudy, it kind of makes you feel a little grumpy or a thunderstorm makes you remind you of being angry or a sunny day brings a smile to your face rainbows bring a smile to your face you know so there's there's so many parallels between the weather and your feelings that I, I thought this would just be a perfect way to introduce kids to the weather without throwing it in their face and just just making it fun for them and and it's something they can always look up at and, and just kind of daydream a little mm. bit well I've, I've thumbed through it Dylan it's it's a great read mm-hmm. but the illustrations are fantastic as well it's beautiful yeah Rosie Butcher is our illustrator and I mean because this is a book I've had in my head for so many years I was very particular about the illustrations and she she just somehow brought my imagination to life. She just totally nailed exactly what I imagined these clouds look like. And I mean, even the science in the back of the book, I, I tried to, you know, not put too much science in the story itself so it could be more of a, an emotional story. But then in the back of the book, you have, you know, some, some weather terms, why thunderstorms happen, why warm air rises and cold air sinks. And I mean, even that kind of stuff, Rosie was able to, you know, just put in a way that makes hopefully science fun for kids. Hey, did, did you, have you done the thing that I think if every, every author's honest, they do, and walk into a bookstore to see it <laughs> on the shelves? I know I've done that. I, so. <laughs> it came out today, so I haven't had a chance yet, but I did order myself a copy on Amazon. <laughs> I mean, they sent me two big boxes of books, but I wanted to see what it would be like to actually open That's the awesome. envelope and Dilly. Bam, there she is. I'm just mm-hmm. so excited. The book looks great. It's a long read. I'm going to wait for the movie, but <laughs> have you, have you read it? There is an audio version of that one. <laughs> have you read it to the boys? What do they think of Misty? Oh, I, yes. I've read it so many times it's almost memorized to this point. Calvin was actually, um, you know, part of the... the he, he helped me write the whole thing because every time he didn't understand something, here's Brian pretending to respond. We're on to him. Mr. Attention Span. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's he's teaching the kids young. But Calvin, you know, anything he didn't understand, we change it. Anything he thought was funny, we kept in the book. You know, he was he was kind of my my Focus co-editor me. on this whole yeah. thing. Oh, I love well, that. congratulations on both Dilly birthing projects. You. Yeah, it's so good to see you. You look great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I miss you, too. Well, Dilly will be back in the third hour. You can find more about the book, Missy the Cloud, at today.com. Love you, Dilly. Talk to you later. Welcome back today on the third hour. Al sits down with 18-year-old activist Greta Thunberg for our series, Today Climate. Take a look. We are back with our series, Today Climate. At just 18 years old, Greta Thunberg is arguably the face of the climate movement. I got a chance to speak with her about the action she wants to see now and her hope for our planet's future. People united will never be defeated. Hope is this. Hope is us, the people. Hope is when people gather to make change. Climate activist Greta Thunberg is back. After holding rallies virtually for more than a year, She's taking to the streets once again, challenging world leaders. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. Green economy, blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 2050, blah, blah, blah. Net zero, blah, blah, blah. Climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. Thunberg's Fridays for Future marches resumed last month and are gaining momentum ahead of the United Nations Climate Change Conference, known as COP26, later this month. If you could fill in the blah, 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 uh, what words would you want to hear from these leaders? Uh, I mainly wouldn't want to hear words because we've heard many words, but as it is now, these words aren't really leading to anything. In 2019, Thunberg grabbed the world's attention by sailing to New York City on an emissions-free solar-powered racing yacht to attend the United Nations General Assembly, giving what became one of the most memorable speeches in UN history. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil and that I refuse to believe. 
The then 16-year-old was angry that promises made in the 2015 Paris Climate Agreement were not being met, namely by the U.S. and China, who are responsible for 80% of global emissions. What would you say is the price of waiting as opposed to globally trying to take action, no matter how small or large? I think that already we are seeing devastating effects of inaction and of waiting. And if we continue to wait, that will only get worse. These damages will be irreversible. The UN says global warming has already pushed our planet into a code red for humanity. And Greta is challenging more than 100 countries to renew their vow to reduce carbon emissions by 2030 and actually fulfill those promises. What do you think it is going to take for that change to happen? It's, it's a very big task that's ahead of us. We need to, to change social norms. One thing that it will take is honesty. We need to be honest about what we are doing and we need to be brave because if we do not start to treat the crisis like a crisis, then the people around us will not understand that we are in an emergency. So it's going to wow. be interesting. Uh, President Bla Biden has uh, pledged to make a major reduction in U.S. greenhouse emissions in order to eat, meet the coal of the Paris Climate Agreement. Uh, but, you know, you've got other countries, China yeah. being the, one of the other major ones that needs to make those those uh, reductions as well. So it's going to be kind of interesting. And, and we conducted this uh, interview as part of NBC News partnership with covering climate now. That's very good. She always brings it home. It's something else this morning I wanted to show you guys that brings it home for me. This side by side of what the Santa Monica Pier is going to look yeah. like in a not even in 100 years by 2100 so in our Wait, children's what? lifetime yes. they say correct me if I'm wrong Al but if we continue on the trajectory yeah, of this is, emissions if, if this is a 3 degree uh, temperature rise. Okay. Uh, this is what the Santa Monica Pier will look like wow. at 2100. This 2100. is the, the, the lifetime yeah. of kids living today. Yeah. So all those, all those businesses and homes, yeah, because of uh, because of, of ice cap melt. That puts it in so, perspective. And if you go on the Climate Central website, they have a, a number of those those comparisons. New York City, Washington D.C. Yeah. I grew up going out there. It's a, yeah. it, it gave me the wow. chills to see that. Yeah. yeah. Thank Those are the that. kind of things I think it, that will resonate because I think sometimes people almost lose sight of it. You almost hear climate change, and there are some like Greta who like take it seriously, exactly. and then others just kind of say, "Okay, let me just recycle that and yeah, keep but, it moving." But it's so much and more. It's, than it's that. already happening in cities like Miami, places like that, where you have uh, you know blue sky flooding because of high tides, winds, and sea level rise. That's good. Welcome back. Today on Hoda and Jenna, Texas A&M kicker Seth Small scored the game-winning field goal over the weekend against Alabama. But the 21-year-old college senior isn't the only one enjoying his newfound fame. His family is going viral after they were filmed celebrating in the stands. Take a look. This is a kind of a special Tuesday. It's a Tuesday Tuesday. You know, usually we um, have a viewer will pick our outfits or in some cases like Rent the Runway yes. did it. This is the very first time that we are choosing outfits in this way. Okay, I know, and we're a little nervous a about little it. A little bit, yes. Because the men of today's show, Al, Craig, and Carson, are picking what we wear. Okay, now they wanted to go, they said, with a comfort look. Okay. I kind of already like the idea. Okay, so here's what they picked. Are these for me? For Hoda. Okay, so... Is Al a picked a, a denim jumpsuit. Yes, I did. Oh, so tell us about well, it. Well, I, I just kind of like the the the, the Al. Uh, <laughs> Deborah wears a lot these a lot, and what's great is they're comfy. They're kind of chic, and once you're done the, with the show, uh, you can change your differential fluid in the car. So yeah, which which is which is nice. You know, it's 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 a little forgiving if you've had a, a you know kind of a. Tough night. I like it. <laughs> but it still is there. Unlike the Craig, which yes. it doesn't leave much to the imagination. Right. That's I mean, a what's that? fitting. That's this is what Craig fitting. wants to see you in. Are I've you, are you really? Bobby? I've actually seen Craig in this. <laughs> and uh, the Carson. And, lastly, and the Carson, which I, I like could see that. Jill Martin wearing, you know, uh -huh. and could see any one of you wearing. But you've worn things like this. This. <laughs> this. Selling the out. Look, you're actually body blocking the Craig. I know. Is that a this, purpose? Is fantastic. Um, I do like the Carson. I have to say. Okay, Al. What, ab what about my okay, options? Okay, let's go to Jenna's. Okay, options. let's go to Jenna's options. The you again. both get voted for we wear the same yes. yes we wear the same yes thing. okay that's hilarious yes now the craig that's 
cute. Is the, uh, actually, you're kind of wearing something like yeah. this right now. Well, well Hoda is. is. Oh. So oh, yeah. there's that. <laughs> uh, and, and the Carson oh. is, uh, if you just... If you just put a flame under this, it <laughs> balloons out, and you can go to the Arizona Arizona Hot Air Balloon Festival. So that that's that's not really flattering. flattering. That's not flattering that for anybody. That's really flattering. But this, everybody looks great in this. Everybody. Wow. The fact that everybody. you picked the same thing for oh, everybody oh, looks good in this. Just say. What a Goodbye. Legend. So long. Okay. Well, Al sold it. You know what I love about Al when he wants something? I know. What if we're both wearing, wearing that, that outfit? jumpsuit? It's which, cute. It's cute. Wow. Could, we okay. could both wear that. We could both wear it. Okay. That'd be a little weird to match exactly the same. Okay. But, you know. The Craig, there's the Craig, and there's the Carson. And there's the Al, the Craig, and the Carson for Jenna. Okay. okay. I think it also tells um, us what they want to see us in. That's kind of interesting. I'm confused. I'm a little confused by Carson's. I have yeah, to be honest. You are? Are you? I don't I don't know. I think Carson's eclectic. Okay. All right. So there was a, okay. So anyone who loves college uh, football knows that Alabama was upset yes. on over the weekend. Texas A&M. I mean, Alabama's a powerhouse. They yes. almost never lose. No, and in fact, never. I'm kind of tired of it. I hate to say it because we love all of y'all down in Alabama. Roll Tide. But they have been winning year after year. I know. Well, and it almost is like second nature, but something did happen. So it was a big moment for a kicker from Texas A&M. His yeah. name is Seth Small. He stepped up to make the kick. This was it. This was all the beans. This is for everything. There he goes. And he made it. And won okay. the game. Yeah. Okay, but what was even more exciting? That yeah. was an awesome moment. But what was even more exciting is to see the reaction of Seth's family, including his wife Rachel, to the game winning field goal. Let's take a look. moments like that. Wow, I'm overcome. What is happening? Wait, what is happening? What is happening? It was like you could we all felt her. We like, how about when she just hurled right over the edge? She was like, nothing is gonna you stop could me see from my her man. Chest moving oh out my god. and in. Oh my god. That, that was, was amazing. <laughs> What All right, is so. happening? Rachel said she's still trying to wrap her head around the whole night, oh, and wow. Seth's probably still binging himself, too. I just loved I what it is. I don't know if that was Bang. his dad, like, was like, but Bang. what about his dad? Just yeah. like, Ooh. oh, God. I know in the, all of those, I think those are siblings and, and other else. It's like, she was like, babe, 47. Look, look, hold hands. Look, wait, hold wait, hands. Wait, 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 wait. Let's go. <laughs> babe. I like babe, 47. You babe, 47. You You're her babe and number 47. 47. Oh God, she's hyperventilating. Okay, no, watch it again. It. Oh God. You got it. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Okay, wow, that was, we really loved that. That was awesome. I, love I could that. watch I'm that a, Texas, a thousand uh, times a over. UT fan. Yeah. And UT and the Aggies used yeah. to kind of have a rivalry, still, although they cannot, moved. There's but, only one side of that story. Right? Well, <laughs> right? yes, except Unless for... Unless you're Alabama. And well, then there was another side, but it was true, beautiful. But it, that was a beautiful moment. We just love Rachel. Yeah. Okay. Those, by the way, being that kicker in that moment is a lot. Ugh. It's a lot. But anyway, did great. Okay, there's a certain energy and electricity in the air whenever Chelsea Handler stops by. That's usually because we never know <laughs> what she's going to say. She's bringing that spark to audiences for years, and she's had her own late-night show. She's written six best-selling books, and recently she launched an advice podcast on iHeartRadio called Dear Chelsea. Yeah, now Chelsea is back where audiences first fell in love with her on the stage, and she stopped by recently to tell us all about her new comedy tour and everything else going on in her life. 
Do you know that we actually started drinking on this show years ago because of your book, Hello Vodka, It's Me, Chelsea? Yeah, uh, not only do I know that, but I take a lot of pride in that. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. Uh, bringing Aiden alcohol forget. to morning television is something that I take very seriously. No, really, they should put that in your open. Yeah. Day, you know? Not that, we're, not that we, we want that to happen. Uh, okay, a lot of people gained some weight during COVID. Some of us learned to bake bread. Yeah, yeah. Most of us just sat around sat and around watched you know, television. Yeah. You fell in love, little Missy. I did, little Missy. I did. I'm in love, and I just and just can't shut up about it. <laughs> so wait, okay. So you, this is weird because this is somebody who you've known for a long, long time. Uh -huh. You never even looked at him that he could possibly be uh, any kind of a romantic interest, and then there he was. Well, yeah, there he was. I think he thinks that we. He his narrative <laughs> is that I we had a mutual crush on each other for a very long period yeah. of time. I don't remember that. <laughs> I remember feeling he had a crush on me, but now I do have a crush on him, and the feelings have been reciprocated. So just, I don't know what happened. You know, I think it was therapy. I went to therapy, yeah. and I was able to see things with a different lens. Mm -hmm. And then I had this great guy in my life who just kind of, you know, wore me down. <laughs> and then I capitulated, and I was like, you know what? You're my boyfriend. I love you. So it's kind of the best kind of thing, you know? He's my best bud, and uh, yeah. Oh, the chemistry. How does that, how do you go from just being friends for so many years to actually feeling like a spark of something. I have to be honest with you. I think you have to be healthy. Like I had oh. to get myself healthy on the inside and then you attract a healthy, you know, oh. like I was attracting unhealthies because I wasn't ready. Yeah. And so I had to kind of do that inner work, which sounds corny, but it's really necessary for everybody. Yeah. And then, and then it was, he was around all the time. And I mean, I would have had to be blind not to see him. You know, he was just so cute. All the things he did. I was like, this guy really cares about me. And then oh. when someone cares about you so much, mm -hmm. You just, you're like, mm -hmm. I, I like this. <laughs> I like this a lot. This is healthy. Yeah. And y'all are touring a little bit together. You're on tour, he's on tour. Every once in a while, you kind of do it together? Or yeah. what? Oh, I didn't hey, mean it like that. This is a morning show. This is a, mor sissy, this is a morning show. You guys <laughs> tell me not to say First things, all, and then you, you go and you you throw that out there. Why you guys call each other sissies, in case people aren't into your relationship oh, for many years. Oh, he has sissies. Uh, and, and Barbara, yeah, and his, she, we just, we oh, I sort of fight Barbara and I over you. Over me, right. Yeah. And like, Well, you should, because last summer I spent a lot more time with her than I did with you, so you should be very jealous. We were doing Pilates and all sorts of things. Who's your bestie? No, that is so rude. I just Don't try and do that, Hoda. This is so you, always trying to create a chasm between people. I won't allow it. That is really Hoda. No, it's not at all. But okay. But to answer your question, yeah, yeah. he's on his tour. I'm on my, I'm on my vaccinated and horny tour. Okay. And um, I'm glad you threw that in there. Yes, yes, of course. It's early morning television. I want to make sure I get it all in. And uh, and then sometimes, like last night in D.C., I did a surprise set at his show. Oh, um, yeah, so we kind of are pop in at each other's shows when we can, but we're usually on tour at the same time. So are you getting yeah. married? Is this like a real? Wow. Oh. No, I don't know. People want to know. Yeah, I don't know that. that I'm the marriage kind oh. you know I feel like I, who knows I doubt it but usually when I say I'm not gonna do something I end up doing it like the next weekend so I'm not gonna say that anymore um, I, I love that we keep just showing this picture of y'all kissing, kissing. It's hilarious. Yeah. okay wait so what was it like to get back up on stage yeah oh my god so much fun I'm doing two shows at the beacon this weekend oh, in New York City here I'm doing oh. Albany um, but it's <laughs> you were so crazy. that's the Santa Barbara ball I mean I was bouncing off the walls oh you know? my god it's so nice to be the reason that oh, uh, people are coming back <gasps> together. It's so nice to be the reason that for people for the first time are in large audiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I take it as a responsibility to bring joy and laughter during this really kind of depressing time yes. that we've all been through. So if we're not laughing about it, you know, we're, we're not. It, it's depressing. Okay, well, since Hoda asked you, like, better, who do you think is, is funnier, you or your man? Oh, God. Well, he's probably funnier. He's he, really funnier. Well, he's like side splitting. Like he's oh. funny, funny, funny. When you go to his show, you cannot stop laughing. Like there's accidents that happen in the audience. I also take pride when there's an accident that happens in my audience. But uh, yeah, he gets people rolling, you know? Um, so I'll give him credit for that out of respect for my man. Oh, I love that God. you said that. Chelsea, All right. we love you. So this weekend, as Chelsea said, she'll be performing at the Beacon right here in New York City. We know what we're going to be doing. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.